Hill. Buffalo will take it as the kick goes three yards into the end zone and is down there by the rookie Russell Copeland. Now the Bills with Jim Kelly at quarterback. Started his pro career in the USFL, came here in 1986, has guided them to three consecutive AFC championships, and he's complimented by the great and steady and remarkably consistent Thurman Thomas. Gardner does a lot of the blocking. Brooks and Reed are the wideouts. Metzelar is the tight end. Up front, Fina, Parker, Hull, Davis, and Baller, and the man they're missing is the longtime guard, Jim Richer, out again, and they hope to have him back in a couple of weeks. Inactive tonight. First down from the 20. They begin with Thurman Thomas, and Thomas picks his way through a very small hole as he is prone to off times do and picks up 10 out to the 30. Now the Redskin defense pummeled of late. Man comes back from an injury. Wilson Johnson is back from an injury and Sterling Palmer is a rookie starting in place of Shane Collins. Banks, Govea, and Andre Collins are the linebackers. Tom Carter, the rookie from Notre Dame and Green. Copeland and Edwards are the safeties. Here's Thomas again. He gets it out to the 33-yard line. He is tackled there by Bobby Wilson after a gain of three. It'll be second down and seven. Well, it's a turnaround here, Frank, I was going to mention. You know what we've just seen out of Thurman Thomas? As many rushing yards as he had against the Redskins in the Super Bowl. He only had 13 yards on 10 carries in that entire game, and he's there already. And the only other time he faced the Redskins in a regular season game late in 1990, he gained in single figures on second and seven, going for Reed and hitting him, and Reed takes it away from Green and picks up the first down. Daryl Green, the all-pro on Reed, but Andre was able to make the catch. Perfect pass by Kelly and another Bills first down. That was much like the Super Bowl matchup. Daryl Green on Andre Reed. Here he is, man for man again. And Reed taking it over the outside shoulder. Good pass by Kelly. Green was beaten, but he recovered so quickly, and Kelly read that beautifully and laid it to the outside. First down, Buffalo at the 39-yard line. Thomas fumbles the ball. Back at the 45-yard line, Washington has it. Tim Johnson, who's been hurt and has come back, has given Washington exactly what it needed after the Bills had looked very good on the initial drive of the game. Just a little draw play, and Thurman Thomas shaking his head, so he probably is accepting the responsibility, probably looking for the opening, not even looking at the ball. Of course, you don't on the draw handoff. You're looking at the line of scrimmage. That one got away, and big turnover here early. Dan already pointed out how Buffalo is leading everyone plus 13 in the giveaway and takeaway department. They turn it over early. Make it 12. <laughs> yes. First down from the 45. And Mark Griffin with a short drop throws it into traffic and has it batted back by the linebacker Mark Maddox. Let's take a look at the Redskin offense now. Mark Griffin started the season, was hurt the second week knee injury missed two games came back has been fairly effective in the two thus far but still a gimpy knee Reggie Brooks is the rookie at a Notre Dame Monk Sanders and Desmond Howard the White House Middleton the tight end up front Eloanibi Brown McKenzie Schlereth and Simmons and again Jim Lachey hurt before the season gone for the year might be the best left tackle in football second down and ten Reggie Brooks into Bill's territory, picks up a first down, and a 15-yard gain for the good-looking rookie as Patton and Kelso converge on the tackle. Defensively, the Bills play a base 3-4. Phil Hansen is still hurt. They hope to have him back, so it's Barnett, right, and they'll move the great Smith up and down the line. Bennett, Patton, Maddox, and the great Darrell Talley of the linebackers. Mickey Washington and Nate Odom start at the corners. Henry Jones, who tied for the league lead in interceptions last year, and the veteran Kelso are the safeties. And there is Bruce Smith, and he'll line up all over the joint. From the 40-yard line, it is Brooks going nowhere. The second big play made by Mark Maddox, the inside linebacker. Well, these two inside linebackers have really performed for Buffalo this year. Anyone that follows the game knows that Carlton Bailey went to the Giants Inside right linebacker over on the other side. Shane Conlon left for the Rams. Let's take a look again as Marvis Patkin and Mark Maddox have filled in so well. And there's Maddox. But that hole on the right side was just plugged up and Brooks looking for running room. Ran right into Maddox. On uh, second and 12. 
deep drop set up the screen and Brooks goes nowhere at no blocking and again it's Mark Maddox. Well how's this for a start to a ball game for Mr. Maddox. <laughs> it's, it's hard to get off to a cleaner start than Mark's done so far here this evening. Reading everything properly. Sure open field tackle watch number 55 he reads this thing. He's a little bit behind Brooks but before Reggie can turn up field Maddox just gets him by the neck and brings him down. Hardly well disguised. Bruce Smith also yeah. did a nice job reading that. Ernest yeah. Biner is in the game. That's number 21. Setting up as the sole setback. That's Ricky Sanders in motion. Third and 14. And Rippin off balance throws it out of bounds. The coverage was excellent. Rippin looking for a secondary and then a third receiver and has to throw it away. And the Redskins are forced to kick. Bell's getting that kind of pressure with only two down linemen. They had six defensive backs. They've used this against the Jets, and they have begun to use it a lot more. Only two down linemen with six DBs in there. That's Russell Copeland, rookie who's going to see a lot of action tonight because Don Beebe is inactive. He's hurt. Reggie Roby, the longtime Dolphin, picked up at the beginning of the year after it was sent packing by Miami. Copeland calls for a fair catch and makes it at the 15-yard line. So the Bills have it at that spot with 11.02 to go in the opening quarter at Orchard Park, New York. Classic television. Hogan's Heroes. Green Acres. Arnold Ziff. Who played him? Nobody. He was the pig. Remember Family Affair? Mr. French. I loved him. Mm -hmm. He's attractive. Pete, Link, Julie. Mod Squad. Okay, Ginger or Marianne? Ginger was a bimba. Marianne. Marianne or Jeannie? Beachwood Age Budweiser. Jeannie. Crisp, clean, classic. Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? Four minutes into the game. No score. Mark Rippon and the Redskin offense looking on now as Kelly and the Bills. Take it at the 15-yard line. And it right to the air. Cut it goes to the tight end. That's a seven-yard pickup. Pete Metzelars makes the catch out to the 22-yard line. Tackled by Kurt Govea. Metzelars has really added a lot of scoring punch and receiving punch for Buffalo this year. And it's a good thing. Keith McKellar, they're tied in from a year ago, unable to play because of a knee injury. Thomas bounces it to the outside. Comes up a little short of the first. He gets to the 24. Third and one. Danny Copeland makes the hit. We talked about McKellar, Frank. One of the things we saw there with him making a stretching grab like that. Helps to be a target that size. The guy's six feet seven. Metzelars, rather. McKellar is out, as you mentioned. But six feet seven is Pete Metzelars. And that's, that's a nice target for a quarterback. Third and one, Redskins nearly jump. They give it to Thomas. There is a flag down. So, in fact, there was contact. Govea came across the line. Larry Nemers is the referee tonight. Defensive guard, offside, five yards, first down. And they will take the penalty because the penalty was five yards and the gain was about three. And that will take them out to the 29 first down. Marv Levy and the head coach of the Buffalo Bills since midway through the 1986 season he has defeated every team in the league except Washington and if you say well what about Buffalo well he beat them when he was with Kansas City Thurman Thomas takes a little swing and goes next to nowhere as Marv told us down on the field though before the game uh, that's a record you can only get if you've been fired. <laughs> right. He said, I'm not sure that it's one that every coach wants a shot at. <laughs> Interesting thing here, because there's only one other guy, and it's Bum Phillips. He's the only other coach to have beaten the 28 current teams in the National Football League. And here is Metzelars again, and he gets dragged down by Danny Copeland. Danny Copeland. Metzelars again, that big target. And Copeland, not bad position, but... Kelly put the ball right in the midsection and no way Copeland could deal with it. Metzelar started with the Seahawks. 6'7", 254 pounds and a Wabash. Really developed this year. Wabash. Good strong blocker also. 
Third and four. Bills at the 35. No score. Early first quarter. Kelly protected very well. And then the catch is made by Andre Reed. And Andre Reed able to break the tackle. Tight rope to the sideline. Touchdown, Buffalo. Washington did not need this. Daryl Green trying to knock it down, and that was the first mistake. And then Reed was able to make the catch, slip a would-be tackle, and go all the way. It's fine to try to knock the ball down as long as you get the ball. But Daryl Green went for the all-or-nothing play. Obviously, he felt sure that he could get a hand on the football, and he did not. Take a look at this. Andre Reed is just going to stop. Green slips. Good concentration Whoa. on the part of Reed. And there's a missed tackle. That was Brad Edwards. Made a diving effort. Good concentrate on, concentration on the part of Reed just to look that ball into his hands. Green, after slipping, comes up and I guess thought that he still had a chance to make a play on the football and rather than go ahead and allow the catch and go for the short tackle on Reed. Thought that he could burst in and get the ball and was just a little short. Steve Christie for the point after, Frank Wright, Kelly's backup at quarterback to hold. And six minutes into the game, a 65-yard touchdown pass from Kelly to Reed. The 50th time they have locked up for a touchdown. Kelly to Reed and it's seven to nothing. Bills. A week of miserable starts in uh, just about every game this season, including the opener when they uh, did defeat the Emmett Smithless Dallas Cowboys. That's worth 47 to 3 in the initial quarter as Christie kicks off an angled kick fielded by Brian Mitchell at the eight yard line. And it's a 21 yard run back for Mitchell up to the 29. He is tackled there by Kurt Schultz. So now Rippin, remember Rippin, MVP of the Super Bowl against Buffalo. Then he had a bad year last year, held out, came to camp late, had a terrific camp this year. They loved the way he performed. They said he was in tremendous shape, and then all of a sudden twisted that knee against Phoenix. And who knows? Under pressure, dumps it off underneath. Too low, incomplete, intended for Desmond Howard, second down. You know, they're trying to give Rippon a quick drop, a quick delivery, so he's not the most agile quarterback to begin with. They just want to give him about a three-step or five-step drop to get rid of the football, but Buffalo is not cooperating. That's twice now he's had to step up. One time he had to leave the pocket, and he really is not a healthy quarterback at the moment. He's just in there playing on a bad leg. Mark Rippon. There's a, a summary of what ails Washington. No big plays on their side, and they've given up a ton defensively. Here's the draw. This is Brooks. And Reggie Brooks comes close to getting the first down, but loses the football. And an alert Redskin is there to corral it at the 36 to maintain possession. And they lost the first down they had. Very close. It would have been real close. You're right. He was beyond the uh, first down marker. And the ball came in a Buffalo bounce and put them back into a situation where they're not there. And they, have we seen a definitive uh, ruling by the officials here well, yet? It looks I like Schlereth is the guy with the ball. He's I at the bottom of the top. I don't think they've made a ruling yet. They're still digging around down there. Finally, now they say the ball belongs to the Redskins. It was a great block out front by the Redskin left side of the offensive line. That was a good pickup by Brooks. Watch him there, number, number 40, driving in. And there comes the hit on the back side there by Patton. Richie doesn't need that. At the 36-yard line now, third down and three. Ernest Biner is the third down back. Art Monk in motion. Here come the Bills. The blocking is good. The pass is perfect. It's Desmond Howard. And Desmond Howard, whose uh, time is, is now, after last year spending most of it on the bench after a long holdout, 
and a guy who had a tremendous and fabled college career at Michigan. It's time for him to step up. Well, after being outscored so badly in the first quarter all year, as you saw in that graphic, they could not afford to go three and out here against Buffalo on this possession. And Nate Odoms just gave Howard all sorts of room. And that was a monstrous pickup for the Redskins and the first 20-yard-plus reception for Desmond Howard of his NFL career. At the 38-yard line, Reggie Brooks. And he gets ridden out of bounds by Darrell Kelly after a pickup of close to three. We have 7.44 remaining. Opening quarter, 7 to nothing, Buffalo. What a great year Darrell Talley is having. Another great year. Another, you're right. 61-yard <laughs> touchdown against the Jets. Only Bill's touchdown of a week ago. Great speed on the corners for the linebackers. Tally on one side, Cornelius Bennett on the other. They can do a lot of things with them, like play two down linemen if they want to. Mark Shoreff is about a yard and a half off the ball. <laughs> Here's Brooks on second and seven. Reggie Brooks picks up five. Wright sends him back. Shoreff, uh, that yard and a half off the ball through the block to help spring him. Talk about giving away the fact that you're pulling. Mark needs to be a little uh, a little more coy about the fact that he's going to be stepping back and leading something to the other side of the formation. That's a giveaway, and the Bills will pick up on that. Take a look at him there. He's the right guard, second guy in. He's a good foot behind all the other offensive linemen to give himself that clearance. But the Bills will read that sooner or later. Third down, short three at the 30. The drive started at the Washington 29, and Bruce Smith comes across, and was he induced is the question. Well, hard count by Rip, and you saw the head bob in Bruce Smith looking right down the line of scrimmage. He loves to get the jump. I think Bruce is giving that one up without a fight. <laughs> I think he knew Defense he was at fault. Offside, running unabated to the quarterback, number 78, five yards, first down. Well, no, uh, no, pro no protest by the great one. Let's take a look at Mark Rippin's head. He bobs that head, and here comes Bruce Smith. Boom, there it is. Smith reads it. You'll get a guy like Smith to move because of his tremendous anticipation. That's one of the reasons he gets so many sacks. I think Marv Levy and the Bills will give up that occasional offside. Now well, he's on the left side. First. And nobody's happier than Ella Wanibi. First down, Reggie Brooks. And this is what Washington's going to have to do tonight, and they've been doing it a lot now with Brooks through the middle, sometimes swing him to the outside. We'll also see Ricky Irvins uh, at some point later on, Tally and Patton in on the tackle. But one of the things Washington's got to do is develop that ground game and keep the ball away. Even though Buffalo's having trouble offensively, you want to keep it away from Kelly and Thomas and Reed. Second down and six at the 21-yard line. And it's Brooks again, and this time not much is there. In fact, nothing. Third down. Awesome. And time out. Well, we've got a hurt player, and oh my lord, the Redskins, that's Ed Simmons, the right tackle who's down there grabbing at his left leg. And this is a team that is in big trouble on the offensive line. You know, this is the only offensive lineman, I think, that has made every start in the same position. Ed Simmons, the right tackle. It's hard to believe what's happened to the Redskins. And you can see his left leg caught underneath him. A look behind the scenes as sports and science converge, brought to you by AT&T. A lot thinner oh. as Ed Simmons goes hobbling off. He got his left leg caught. Jeff Bostic, who's got a bad knee, he comes in to play center. Ray Brown, who was at left guard, comes out to play right tackle. And Raleigh McKenzie, who was at center, moves over to play left guard. And the Redskins are just about out of offensive linemen. Third and six, and this is Ricky Sanders taking it to the six-yard line. Big third down conversion. Mickey Washington makes the tackle, sets up a first and goal. And the one thing about the Redskins, they've been stumbling and stuttering offensively, but inside the 20, in the red zone, they have been very proficient this year. Sanders over the middle, concentrating on the ball and ripping right on target. You just wonder as you look over at Ed Simmons being treated for that left knee. 
But a tire, this offensive line can hold together. They are down to nothing. From the tire, the Washington trainer, the busiest man in Washington. Here's Brooks, and Brooks scores. So the Washington Redskins, in a year when teams are bogging down deep in the opposition's territory, they have now scored 10 of the 14 times they've had the ball inside the 20. So they do know how to get it in. And the extra point will tie the game. And is not this their first first quarter touchdown? Yep. This group just shuffled around and made some changes. And look at the blocking on the right side between Brown and Schlereth. Good combination blocking of passing bills from one to the other and opening up that hole. Low Miller boots it through, and so the Washington Redskins move 71 yards against the Bills defense. 4:35 to go in the opening quarter. 7-7. Four of the game's greats play golf's most smashing of And Buffalo. Redskins to kick off. Loma to send it down toward Ken Davis. And Russell Copeland. And a good low Miller kick. Down in the end zone. Bill coming out to the 20-yard line. And this is the spirit of Akron uh, flying up from Ohio. And I'm told that this is the first time a blimp has ever televised uh, from a site where the temperature was under 32 and there was snow on the ground. But you didn't know that. Courageous little endeavor. <laughs> Call Guinness. Yes, immediately. <laughs> so providing the Phoenix Orchard Park is... Uh, Al, you are a fountain of... Oh, oh absolutely. <laughs> useless information. Completely. <laughs> totally. From the 20-yard line. Thurman Thomas goes nowhere with his second down and... 10. Tim Johnson makes the hit, and uh, they tell us that Ed Simmons, and it's no surprise, sprained knee and gone for the night. And the Redskins, it'll be a closely watched situation with this offensive line for the rest of the night because they are perilously close to running out of folk. Second down and 10. Good blocking up front. A lot of time for Kelly, and he fires to Andre Reed for a 20-yard gain and a first down at the 40-yard line. Frank, he's got to be one of the happiest guys in America that they are finally letting him run some deeper routes rather than just crossing seven and eight yards downfield, catching the ball, and getting hammered by linebackers. Well, this was well down the field, and Reed, who had got off to such a slow start, at that time... Andre Reed of all. Well, well just to get in. <laughs> it's seven for seven. <laughs> Kelly's been perfect tonight. Nine yard game. <laughs> they wanted to get him back into the swing of things and get bombed by a couple big guys in that 240 pound range. Well, he is one of the best crossing receivers in the game today. Terrific at running the ball once he catches it. But he works very well underneath. A lot of concentration. Seldom takes his eyes out of the ball. Second and one. Here's Thomas, and he's got a first down as he takes it to the Redskins 48 yard line. Duvea makes the tackle. Kelly off to a perfect start, and four of those seven into the hands of Andre Reed, who has accounted for 122 of those 136. Not, not a bad first quarter. <laughs> yeah. But he's on his, on his way to what, about a 600 yard game? Yeah, with 240 to go in the quarter. And there's Kelly's first incomplete pass. Reed double covered, and that time it was Tim Johnson who came crashing through and dumped Kelly. Take a look again. First time they had real pressure on Kelly. Tim Johnson just bursting through the attempt to block of Glenn Parker, who was filling in for Jim Richard. Yeah, you know, I mentioned earlier, missing the second game in a row after a oh, bunch of 145 consecutive starts or something like that. Uh, yeah. Looks like John Fina, but Kelly moved. Uh, Kelly gave a heck of a flinch in there as well. There was uh, more Four than just a little movement. Prior to the snap, number 65, offense, five yards, still second down. Yeah, John Davis, the right guard move. John Fina, the left tackle uh, as well, both guys. Sometimes uh, that barking by the quarterback is so loud, you scare your own guys. And I, I think that's what Jim Kelly did right there. He, he scared Davis and Fina both into jumping. These guys, their nerves are on edge. It's it's a pressure-packed situation up there. You've got to be soothing with these big yeah. guys. Second down and 15. And Kelly had not quite 
shoved along the far side, flag down, and Carl Bangs hit him, and the officials say out of bounds. Did you see the stiff arm that Kelly gave Bobby Wilson, who I thought was going to get the sack on Kelly in the backfield, and he gave him a pretty good stiff arm. And now Kelly's uh, line mates come to his defense, as they always will. Personal foul for a late hit out of bounds. Number 58, defense, 15 yards, first down. First of all, let's see if we can get a look at the stiff arm that he puts on Bobby Wilson, their number one draft choice. Jim breaks to the right. All right, here comes Wilson. That's a pretty good move by Kelly. But out here, he gets a little swivel hip, and that's obviously out of bounds. Carl Banks knew right where he was, standing on the sidelines. First down at the 29. Game time, 7-7. A little more than two minutes to go in the first quarter. But a deep and if anything that was closer to the offensive interference than defensive as Brooks was there and he turned into the defensive back as Tom Carter the rookie had position oh did he ever that's great position on the part of the rookie from Notre Dame there's a blitz on Carter knows that he has got Brooks all the way man for man you're not going to play it any better than that that's and offensive Brooks interference made a good play on it gets away with offensive interference doesn't draw the flag but Tom Carter is going to be one of the great defensive backs in this league on a face pass to the well. yep. Second down and 10. Kelly incomplete. Metzelaar is the intended receiver. And Tim Johnson, again, we mentioned he's one of the guys that has come back. He's been hurt, and he can make a big difference up front in terms of pressure. Well, he's coming through Glenn Parker, who is filling in for Jim Richer, but even Tim Johnson is playing with a very sore thigh. We go down the List of the injuries to the Redskins, it sounds like mash. Third and ten, and here's a draw. And it turns out to be a 13-yard gain. It looked like they didn't quite have it in sync, but it worked. First down. It's, it's a beautifully designed play if that's the way they intended it because Kelly went past Thurman Thomas. And it gave the impression that the draw couldn't take place any longer because he moved past him and then he got him the football and it really threw the Redskins for a loop. They, they gave up on the draw. You see how he got lost in there too? Nobody runs the draw better than Thurman Thomas. But then nobody does anything much better than Thurman Thomas. They've got a wraparound draw that they run. That was a little bit different though. Here's Thomas again, picking up about three to the 15. Second and seven, he stopped by Banks. Thomas off to another great year, but early in the year they Kind of called it to his attention that he was letting up a little bit on in the passing game and maybe taking a bit of a breather. They use him so much, so they want him to take his breather on the sideline. So they called it to his attention, got right back into it. Seven receptions a week ago against the Jets and the all around player that he has been over the years once again. Second and seven, and they give it to Carwell Gardner, who carries him not twice a game. Normally in there to block, takes it to the 11 yard line. That's Gardner's seventh carry of the year. Half a minute to go in the opening quarter now. Game time, 7 7. Third down, long two, just inside the 11. Uncharacteristically for the Bills, goes all the way down, and Kelly on that short drop throws. Touchdown, Billy Brooks. I'd say that's a pretty good changeup on the part of Jim Kelly. It was 172, whatever that is. 172, I think, is a slant for Brooks. Yeah, you're, <laughs> Brooks, you're going to have man for man. It's going to be Tom Carter. I'm going to drill you. Just give me a good slant. Billy Brooks, the unprotected free agent that came over from Indianapolis good possession receiver Carter trying to stay with him he's just gonna have to learn when you get down inside the 10 or 15 you got to play it even tighter Wright takes the high snap and gets it down and Christie bangs it through with 10 seconds remaining third TD of the year for Billy Brooks and the Bills go up again by seven that's pretty Oh, 
My back hurts, and I had a game this afternoon. Five-minute drive from downtown Buffalo and the home of the Bills since 1973. <laughs> Bruce Smith, he's wearing those thermal gloves, but if, an hour before the game, he comes out in a light T-shirt. You know, you, you would have thought it was the Pro Bowl. With a headset, he's listening to Ed and James, and that's the way he warmed up for the nice game. Well, it's a fearsome sight with, with Bruce in that cutoff T-shirt. I think it's an intimidation move. Here's Christie to kick off, and it's a short kick. Fielded at the 10, Brian Mitchell. Out to the 26-yard line with one second remaining now in the first quarter. You notice how they keep those mittens clipped together there. Uh, keep them in pairs. It's, it's nothing more frustrating than when you go to get your mittens, you can only find one. Just like Mommy would have you do I'm it. I'm telling you. Jenkins appears to be a little walking wounded as he heads for the Redskins sideline and the litany of injured Redskins continues. Mm. First down. Redskins trailing by seven. Final play of the quarter. And Rippin throws him. It's incomplete. Art Monk drops it. Every second and ten in the second quarter. It's underway. End of one, Buffalo 14, Washington 7, and we'll return with the second quarter of Monday Night Football after this commercial message. And a word. Second quarter in Buffalo. Al Michaels, Frank Gifford, and Dan Deere up Monday Night Football. Ed Simmons done for the night. Has the knee wrapped. Redskins have it at the 25, second and ten. And it's knocked down by Cornelius Bennett at the line of scrimmage. 14 to 7. The Bills on top. Kelly has thrown two touchdown passes and through the air, Buffalo has really done a number on the Redskins in the first quarter. Those are astounding yardage figures by the Bills. 185 yards for one quarter's work. It was a good Washington drive as they get their second crack at it. But the inability of the Redskins D to do much with Buffalo in that first quarter results in 14-7. That time Jeff Wright is the guy coming across and making contact. What a good year he's having. And Coach Mitchell, 91 defense, five yards, still third down. Well, that's the second time uh, Mark Rippon has got the Bills to come across. Remember, he got. Bruce Smith looking right in the middle of the screen. There's Jeff Wright. That's called licking your chops because you know you have a hurt quarterback on the other side of that offensive line. Third and five. Redskins from their 30. Short drop. Wobbly pass caught first down. It's Clark Buck. His first catch of the night takes it out to the 49-yard line. 21-yard pickup. Redskins giving the impression here, Frank, that they're just not going to go quietly into the night without a fight. Going right back to the play they dropped a moment ago. J.D. Williams coming off a very sore leg, making his first start in three weeks, and they're going right after it. Spot it right on the 50 yard line. Monk in motion, and Rippon's got to take a timeout. Timeout. With Buffalo up by seven. Ball is being brought to you by the new Dodge, a division of the Chrysler Corporation, and Bud Light. If you want great taste that won't fill you up and never lets you down, make it a Bud Light. We are 42 seconds into the second quarter. Aloha. From Orchard Park, New York. First and 10. Redskins at the 50-yard line. And Reggie Brooks gets four to the 46, and that's Marcus Patton making the stop. Dan, maybe you can talk about what it is to move linemen around like the Redskins have had to do here tonight all season long, really. But the Simmons going down, you have different people that certainly haven't worked there and prepared there during the week coming in. One thing about Washington, Frank, though, 
I will say they have versatile offensive linemen. They take turns playing different positions, sometimes out of necessity, but they are versed at playing both tackle and guard, and Jim Hannafin's worked them that way over the years. Second and six, and it's caught by Desmond Howard at the 36-yard line. Nate Odoms makes the tackle. First down, Washington. The guy they really miss not having here tonight is Joe Jacoby, who didn't make the trip. He's got back spasms, and if they need another player, Big Joe's not here to bail him out like he has. And there's Bruce. You see him just easily going inside Mo Elowanibi, the left tackle, and Rippin pays for it. What a year, what a player. And you wonder if it's conceivable that he can continue to get better because he appears to be doing just that here this year. First down to Washington at the Buffalo 35. Bills lead 14-7. Here's Brooks bringing it to the outside. He gets by Talley, and Reggie Brooks is out of bounds as he takes it to the 27-yard line for a gain of about eight. Talley made the big play last week, and uh, as his interception gave them the lead, it was because of the pressure by Bruce Smith. Now they came right at Smith that time with the old counter gap. Both Ray Brown and Ella Winnie pulled from the other side. Bruce took them both on. I'm surprised that Brooks was still, still able to pick up that kind of yardage. Second and two at the 27-yard line. He guns it over the middle, it's tipped, and it's incomplete. It was tipped away at the 20-yard line by Darrell Talley. Bills once again in that two-down line set. Jeff Wright, Bruce Smith, the only defensive lineman in there as Cornelius Bennett lines up a defensive end to give it a 3-4 look. Hello and Eby again on Bruce Smith. This time he works to the outside, and then just drives him straight back. But really a good job by Mo of standing him up, holding him, holding his ground, and taking Smith out of the play. Third down and two. From the 27. And this time going through the middle is Ernest Biner, the third down back. And that's the fourth time that Washington has converted in five third down opportunities tonight. So getting the job done to keep the drive going. First down at the 24. Next week, we go to Kansas City, where Reggie White will be in action. We know that. The Green Bay Packers, and you know about Joe Montana, injured yesterday. Listen to this questionable next week. Green Bay at Kansas City from Arrowhead on Monday Night Football. First down, 24-yard line. Redskins on the move. Reggie Brooks. And he turned uh, nothing into a five-yard gain. He's tackled by Oliver Barnett. We have to see whether this drive results in any Washington points, but you have to be impressed with the way they have moved the football on the heels of the two Buffalo scoring drives. Came back with a long scoring drive of their own. Al mentioned four or five on the third down conversions. Brooks, there you see, averaging five yards a carry. But I am most impressed with Washington, the way they have moved the ball when they had to particularly with a complete reshuffling of that offensive line. Second and five. Rippin throws it out of the end zone. Art Monk, the intended receiver, third down. We mentioned before the Redskins uh, sputtering offensively generally this year, but when they get down inside the 20, there they are counting tonight. They have gotten into the end zone 71% of the time, and the league average is 46%. Washington tops in the league. 10 out of 14. On third down, rip and throws, and incomplete. Intended for the double-covered Howard, Darby, and Odom for their cover. He was wide open initially, and the ball a little late getting there, and by the time it got there, Buffalo had covered. Howard was open. He had beaten Odom. And Darby was a little late if it was a well-thrown ball. This will be a 36-yard attempt for Chip Lowmiller. Pat Eilers to put it down. 
And Low Miller, one of the best in the league. Flag is down, though. James Williams ran into him. And even I think no foul. Roughing the kicker, number 28. Ooh, that's automatic first down. That's a roughing. He said 28. I think he just misidentified yeah. the 29 on J.D. Williams. Interesting. It's going to be good. This is the penalty like, getting the first down. Yeah, this is just like a punting situation. There's running into the kicker and roughing the kicker. He called it roughing. Now, I think even a running into the kicker would have been enough for a Washington first down. Very, very close. If it's a five yard, they're going to probably measure. Well, he called it roughing, though. Yep. If it's roughing, that's a personal foul right. and an automatic first down. Mm -hmm. Right. Not to mention the distance was and plenty to, for the uh, first down anyway. And halfway to the goal. Now, the only thing I have to say is when you differentiate between running into the kicker and roughing the kicker, this looked more like running into the kicker than roughing the kicker. Yep. Watch the right side. The rush is coming from the right. There's William. He's on the ground. He slides into it. Yeah. You can call that one or the other. Either way, I think it's a Washington first down. Snowball gets thrown onto yeah. the field on first and goal. And this is Reggie Brooks Reggie taking Brooks it to the six. You got uh, 80,000 uh, wonderful football fans here in Buffalo, and it only takes a couple of jerks to start throwing snowballs out onto the field uh, to make the whole thing look bad. And uh, I hope security is able to get that under control because you don't need to see a player take a snowball right in the face. Pally is uh, slow and arising, but on his feet back in the huddle. And even close. The Redskins are able to move the ball on the ground. Good running by Brooks. Line blowing out on the left side. Redskins continue to be able to move it on the ground. Second and goal at the six-yard line. There is a little flinching, but a flag is down. In fact, a flag is down. Monk, the intended receiver, but a flag is down. That was J.D. Williams on the coverage of Monk. Full start, number 64 offense prior to the snap. Five yards, still second down. Alawanevi over on the left side. There's a little fade pattern intended for Muck. That's J.D. Williams on the coverage, and he has got his hands all over Muck and even beyond the five-yard zone. Back to the 11. Second and goal. Buffalo leads 14-7. Early second quarter. Liner in the game. Muck in the... And an end around is Ricky Sanders. He gets to the three-yard line to the least third down and goal. Bennett and Chelsea get on the hit. That's a good call by Rod Dahar, the offensive coordinator. Here comes student body this side. Out in front, there's number 63, Raleigh McKenzie, with a good block, and Ricky Sanders. All he had to do was get by one bill, and he's into the end zone. And another huge third down for Washington. Well, I just had that to buy the offensive line play of these Redskins. As shuffled up as they've been again here tonight. Third and goal, Rippin, who is 5 of 13, stays on the ground. And Ernest Biner can only get to the two-yard line, and Barnett makes the tackle. So they uh, stay on the ground. After the penalty, get it to the two, and now Low Miller, who had those three points taken off, will try to put them back on. And this is the same uh, as an extra point in terms of distance. They'll so spot it at the uh, 10, 20 yard field goal. And I lose the hold. 19 yards officially. And he puts those three. Back up there. 824 remaining in the first half. Buffalo now leading Washington 14 to 10. I'm dangerous. Nice shot. Help us, Muscadine. All for one! More for me. 
I love a good adventure. The excitement strikes November 12th. The Three Musketeers, rated PG. Low Miller kicks off and into the end zone for the touchdown. It's hard to uh, concentrate on hitting a golf ball when you're standing over the ball and you look up and you see the whales jumping in the straits out there between Lanai and Molokai. It's mm. one of nature's most beautiful spectacles, and I'm not talking about my golf swing. Either the village <laughs> course or the bay course or the plantation, take your pick. Yeah. Those little pineapple drinks. Yep. Yes. This message was brought to you by the <laughs> Maui Chamber, Chamber of Commerce. That's exactly right. <laughs> and we want to be cop. Absolutely. <laughs> First down, Buffalo at the 20 yard line. They lead 14 to 10. And the snow in Buffalo. 8 19 to go in the. First half. Kelly throws, catch is made by the rookie Copeland, and that's a first down as he works his way out to the 31 yard line. Little underneath pattern on the part of Copeland, the rookie fourth round draft pick. They're so high on here in Buffalo. Good return, man, but a lot of quickness. Andre Reed on a little fly pattern, clearing it out for Copeland. He gets the first down. First and 10 at the 31 yard line. 14 to 10 Buffalo. And Thurman Thomas gets spilled as he reaches the line of scrimmage. Undercutting him was Andre Collins. Okay. Buffalo Bills. It's a funny thing. Take a look at that. Kelly in passing, Thomas in rushing, Reed in receiving. Five years in a row, they've been the team leaders. No other team in the history of the league has had the same three players lead the team in these categories for five straight years and right now they're leading again so chances are unless somebody gets hurt they're going to make it six. Second and ten and there's Andre oh. Reed adding to his club leading total and another first down he's out of bounds at the skin 49. Oh did he put a move on Daryl Green. Andre Reed driving to the inside. Green assigned obviously to cover him all night as he was in Super Bowl 26 and Andre Reed gave him a little head move to the inside and Green just totally lost it. Break to the inside. Look at Green. A little look to the inside on the part of Reed and Green right out of your picture. Great presence of where he is, Andre Reed. Thomas. Two yard gain to the 47 yard line. Six forty five remaining in the first half the Buffalo Bills trying to go to six and one trying to remain tied with Miami in the AFC East and the Washington Redskins are trying to avoid losing a sixth consecutive game in the same season for the first time since 1963. Kelly and that's incomplete bobbled and dropped by. Steve Tasker, who was the special teams maven, in there with Don Beebe hurt. Uh, they're throwing Tasker in on occasion as a wide receiver. Tasker's a little fragile himself. He has had a pulled hamstring, was inactive a week ago, and Carl Banks really unloads on Tasker. Tasker might have been looking for big number 58. <laughs> The special team star was looking for big number 58, don't you think? You caught that head come up there, didn't you, before the ball arrived? Where are you, 58? <laughs> Third down and eight, and Kelly throws. He is picked off. The interception is made by the rookie, Tom Carter. And the youngest player in the National Football League gives the Redskins the ball back to your midfield. Well, I'd like to credit Carter with a great move. That was just a bad throw on the part of Kelly. He threw right into the coverage. Carter was deep. Just standing there, and Kelly hit him right in the stomach. From the 45. But the fourth interception for the rookie from Notre Dame. Poorly thrown ball there by Kelly. 6-14 to go in the first half. KFC presents <laughs> Doing It Right on Monday night. What Colts stunned New England by throwing one touchdown pass and scoring two others all in one In Deardorf at uh, Rich Stadium, Orchard Park, New York. Redskins have it at the 45-yard line. They trail. 5-4, Reggie Brooks. Swing into the outside. Picks up two. 
Well, Richie Pettibone in his first year, there's a flag down. The, the, he's a tough guy. He's a good guy. But he's a guy who, uh, despite five straight losses, uh, Jens, he, he just hasn't lost his cool, hasn't exploded. And he feels they can they can turn this thing around. You know, I think he's very proud of the way they've held together and all the adversity they had, mask. a lot of the injuries, the and as a face mask call. The but they have held together. We've seen it again tonight. They lose Simmons, and uh, they're not only in this game, but they're they're they well have a in chance this game. to win it. Absolutely, You're exactly right. What they cannot afford, though, I think, is one more injury to the offensive line. If they have anything else unfortunate happen to them, they're in big trouble. They they just really don't have anybody who has any experience at all left to go into the game. Of he kind of joked last night. We asked yeah. him what happened if Wally McKenzie got hurt. He said, "I just get out the white flag." First and four. Rippin is five out of thirteen. The running game's been okay. He's completed six out of fourteen. That's the first down. So Rippin's got it. He's got to get high. Six out of fourteen. That's forty-three percent. That won't win you a lot of games in Washington, but it will get into the White House. <laughs> You're exactly right. <laughs> hey, good play there by Frank Whitecheck. Uh, this is the rookie from Maryland, their sixth round draft choice, and I believe that's his first reception in the National Football League. That is. He's been inactive for all six games and that's showing a lot of athleticism there. That's exactly right. And for those of you who subscribe to Al Michaels' political views, we'll give you an address later where you can send money. That, was just, that was just a promo for election day. <laughs> tomorrow, get out and vote. Here's Brooks at the 39 yard line, second and 11. That is good advice. Let's, let's get out and vote tomorrow. Yeah. Rich Stadium, Orchard Park, New York. Sold out. This uh, the stadium opened in 1973. In fact, it opened with a preseason game between the Bills and the Washington Redskins. And in that game, Washington ran the opening kickoff back for a touchdown. Were you here? I was here. I came to that game. Herb Mulkey ran it back. What a way to begin. Herb Mulkey ran back a lot of touchdowns for the Redskins. There's a little oh. shovel to Brooks, and he just taken down from behind at the 32-yard line by Bruce Smith. Well, not the prettiest, but very effective. Rippon is not too effective as a rollout type of quarterback. He's, I know he's not going to run the football, but nevertheless, the little shovel was effective. And Bruce Smith with another almost superhuman effort to get back into the play. He's so quick and so large that about 275, 80 pounds, and still just like a scat back out there. Third down and four at 32. And a rip and throws incomplete. The intended receiver was Desmond Howard. Howard. Good and coverage by Odoms. With Low Miller coming in, we're looking at about a 50 yard field goal. And the one thing about Low Miller, this is certainly within his range, he's kicked a lot of 50 yards through his career. Most of them off artificial surfaces. Got a 56 out of 55, whole bunch of 53s and twos. There it is through his career. He is uh, better than four of five in this range on artificial turf. He's just within the range. It'll be a 49 yard attempt. And it is no good. But it certainly at the distance, Edge. <laughs> So Low Miller can't deliver. It remains 14-10 with 3.59 to go in the half. Providing the Scenics high above Rick Stadium on a very cool but clear night. Buffalo has the ball from the 33 and a little toss back to Thurman Thomas who gets wrapped up at the 41 yard line and ridden down by Darrell Green. One all pro tackling another. What a great cutback runner Thurman Thomas is. He does not have great speed. Going back to 1990 over 700 attempts carrying the ball. His longest run 44 yards from scrimmage. And he just is amazing. Second down and one from the 42 yard line. Thomas. Oh, to the 45 yard line. Well, the Buffalo first, first down. Down. Another thing that amazed Again, me about him, he carried the ball almost 900 times when he was at Oklahoma State. So first and, and he has carried it over 1,500 times in just this is sixth year with Buffalo. You talk about durability. The thing is more wearing and tearing than the running back position. Here's his 13th carry of the game. 
And he's now gained the total of 46 yards as he takes it across the 50 to the Redskins 49-yard line. Like most of the great backs that have ever played this game, and it looks like Ed Simmons is on his way into the locker room, but Thurman Thomas picks up that extra three to four yards on the end of a run almost every time when a lot of other backs may have been tripped up and gone down. He somehow picks up that extra yardage. The up back Gardner doesn't uh, go very far. It'll be third down and three. Well, every now and then they slip it to Gardner. Not very often, as you put it out earlier, six carries coming in. But the Dan, the other thing about a back like Thurman Thomas, he seldom ever gets a real straight shot. Whoever's going to hit Thurman Thomas is very careful about him. He slips and slides so much that whoever's putting the tackle on him, they're very careful about it. Thanks. Consequently, he doesn't get that big shot. Third and three upcoming. They've got the lead. They'll let the clock tick down to the two-minute warning. Third and three when we come back with two minutes to go in the half. 14 to 10, Buffalo. Uh, looking on, hopeful of getting the ball back for the Redskins before the first half is over as the Bills here try to convert on a third and three from the 48-yard line. Two minutes to go on the half. Bills on top, 14-10. You know, Al, you ought to write a book. How to go to the men's room in a minute and 50 seconds. <laughs> and not it's, lose your breath. It's remarkable. Like that? <laughs> it may, it'd make a better how-to video. <laughs> He's really swift through here. <laughs> Got to have a clock in your head. Oh, look and at that. Snap it. A trick play, but uh, it doesn't fool the Redskins as Thurman Thomas takes it and Bobby Wilson reads it along with Al Noga. And it will create the first Buffalo punt of the night. Well, that's one of those plays. That's a blind snap from the center, Kent Hall. Spend a lot of time during practice working on that play for about a yard pickup. That's the sort of Johnson read it. He just kind of wandered into it. Chris Moore will send it skyward for the first time this evening. And it goes all the way into the end zone. Brian Mitchell was back there and lets it go. And so the Redskins will take over at the 20 yard line with 110. Well, at halftime, uh, a visit with Jim Kelly, and last night was Halloween night. This was the scene outside the the Kelly domicile. It was snowing where we were, just a few miles from the stadium and Jim Kelly's home. Those are the kids coming up to trick or treat, and uh, you can see some of the costumes that were worn last night by some of Jim's friends. Who is that a house or an apartment building? Oh, well, it's a beautiful place. That Jim is so proud of that he's decorated with a lot of jerseys from his friends around the league and we'll talk to him and we'll also be talking to George Foreman as the skins take over at the 20 yard line it's Reggie Brooks up to the 23 yard line he is tackled there by Jeff Wright George Foreman has a new series coming up a very creative name George yeah. well, who's going George, George. Who, to argue with him <laughs> that's a big name in the Foreman house one two three four five yeah. Redskins have two timeouts remaining, but they're in no hurry to use them. And in fact, uh, Reggie Brooks gets tackled at the 22. And the question is, does Buffalo want to take a timeout here? They've got exactly to do what they're going to do. And the Buffalo Bills say, well, if you're not going to go into your two-minute offense and it's third down and eight, we'll take a shot at it and try to get the ball back. So it'll be third down and eight. We have 31 seconds left in the half. Bills by four. The 22. Third down and eight. The uh, Washington Redskins, a nine-point underdog coming into this game. They have not been a nine-point dog in 10 years in any game. It is third down and eight. And they pick up three on the ground up to the 25, and the Bills take another timeout. Ernest Biner carrying. Washington will punt to Buffalo with 26 seconds remaining in the first half.
Of one timeout left, Russell Copeland sets up at his own 25-yard line. Low kick. Flag. Flag down. They ran into the kicker. 39-yard kick. Copeland gets tackled immediately. And Mark Pike is the guy, number 94, who runs into Reggie Roby. Personal foul, roughing the kicker, 15 yards, first down. It's going to take it out to the 40. Well, it was worth the shot, I think. Buffalo is thinking they, with just a few seconds on the clock, they went for the block. There is Pike. Hardly, hardly roughing, but he gets the roughing call. He just rolled into him. That's yeah, uh, my opinion is the same as yours, Frank. I, I I would have called that running into the kicker. I would have called the last penalty running into the kicker, but Larry Nemers, the uh, referee, has a somewhat different interpretation than we do. Part of the problem is that these players are hitting this turf, which is a little slick tonight, and they're sliding. Both of the ones that we have seen have been uh, players whose momentum after they've hit the ground carried them on a slide into the kicker. Now the uh, skins try to, if they can pick up about 25 yards oh, yeah. here, they're going to set up a low Miller field goal. And ripping throws, and it is intercepted at the 48-yard line. The pick made by James Williams with 11 seconds to go. Very good move on the part of Williams. He immediately got out of bounds, saw there was no action. He was going to get bomb there. The intention was Ricky Sanders. He was the intended receiver. Rather than run off a whole bunch of seconds on the clock on the part of Williams, he got out of bounds. He's going to let the offense look it over. Here's Sanders breaking to the sidelines and a good break on that ball by Williams. So now the Bills at the 48-yard line, 11 seconds. They have one timeout. Come up in the gun with three wideouts. Kelly change it again. Play clock all the way down to three. They just do get it off. To the 40-yard line. The catch made by Reed. They take a timeout. You're still looking at a 57-yarder, but remember, Steve Christie has the longest field goal in the league this season. Right here. 59 yards. And the, uh, well, if anything, I'm sorry. In fact, I talked to Christy when he was warming up tonight. I said, is there a prevailing wind? He says, if it is, it's in this direction. Well, that's the direction of the flag on the top of the stadium. As you all know, the flag, uh, the wind is different off and down on the field, but he will have, if he gets it up enough, some help from the wind. You can see that is exactly the direction that he's going to be kicking. We've seen both kickers put the ball into the end zone in that end zone tonight easily on their kickoffs. Adam Lingner to snap it. Frank Reich to hold it. It'll be a 58-yard attempt for Christie. Oh, he hooked it. Nope, short. Yeah. And it's Darryl Green, and Green is going to run it back. And this ball is alive. Darryl Green was back there. And he gives everybody a pretty good thrill before he starts to slip and slide. And they finally get him at the 40-yard line. The Buffalo Smart just going to sleep on that. Yeah. yeah. Smart play by Darryl Green. Yeah. I remember one time there. watching Lem Barney yeah. run one out of the end zone for a touchdown. Jim Kelly, George Foreman at halftime, 14-10 Buffalo. Back we come after this message from the NFL. A word from your ABC station. Big dealer, remember Buick, the new symbol for quality in America, Merrill Lynch. For clients around the world, we make a difference. The difference is Merrill Lynch and Miller Lite. Great taste, less filling. Can your beer do this? Mark Griffin and the Redskins down by four, trying to snap a five-game losing streak since Art Monk in motion. That was Christie's first out-of-bounds kickoff of the season. 
So from the 35, Griffin throws underneath. It's Reggie Brooks. That's a 12-yard gain. They love Reggie Brooks. I mean, he's the future for them. There's no question about it. The one thing they want to see him get better at is catching the football. Let's take a look at the numbers from the first half of play. Both teams have moved the ball well, but you see the decided advantage in yardage goes to the Buffalo Bills, and when their defense had to, they stiffened, forcing the Redskins into field goal attempts. Two turnovers for the Bills, one for the Skinnies. <laughs> Griffin gives it to Brooks. And he gets wrapped up from the middle. Bruce Smith had a chokehold on him to the chorus of Bruce. When he first started to play this game, he was most easily recognized with his tremendous pass rushing abilities and his upfield burst, the spin moves back to the inside, doing things that we haven't seen a man that size doing in a long, long time, maybe back to the days of Deacon Jones, but where Bruce Smith has really evolved into a truly great player is the way that he's playing against the run. He is not a one-dimensional football player. He does every aspect of the game and does it well. Second and ten, and here he comes from the outside. They pick him up and ride him out of the play, and underneath it's Ricky Sanders to the 41-yard line, and that's a first down. Henry Jones makes the hit. Sanders tackled by Henry Jones. Sanders hobbles back to the Redskins and you can see the anguished look on Ricky's face at look at him these guys watch some strength 67 is Ray Brown he's got Bruce going to the outside and that's called discarding your blocker <laughs> that's that's treating a man poorly Sanders still hobbling they're minus Tim McGee as well tonight, one of their wide receivers, he's hurt. Ripping with a play fake, then throws incomplete, intended for Art Monk, covered by Mickey Washington. It's a good play by Washington. They have got to try to force the ball downfield. We talked early on about the fact that they've been spending too much of their passing game just working, working the very short routes. And even if it's an incompletion, they have got to attempt to vertically challenge the Buffalo defense. And all the while making sure they preserve the health of number 11, Mark Rippin. Rippin at 45% right now. Second down and 10, 41 yard line. I try to get it to Howard. And the flag is down. This is Frank Whitecheck, the rookie from Maryland. Marker is down. At the line of scrimmage. If you're a Redskin fan, get used to the name of Frank Wycheck. Over the years, the Redskin coaches think he's going to evolve into a real good football player. You're seeing a little action tonight because of Terry Orr not being able to go once again. Offside, Offside. Defense. defense. The defensive defense nose guard is lined up in the neutral zone. Five yards. Five yards. Repeat, Repeat, second down. Second down. Be Jeff Wright. But Frank Wycheck, uh, all-time leading receiver of Maryland. That was Terry Orr. That was Terry Orr on the sidelines. Uh, he has a sore knee, and we're going to look at Wycheck tonight at the H-back position. He was a running back and a good receiver of Maryland. 134 receptions there. Good size, 6'3", 235-pounder. Had a concussion in the final preseason game and had been inactive for all the previous Redskins games until tonight. Second and five from the 37-yard line. Reggie Brooks going nowhere. Bruce Smith makes the hit. Henry Jones was in there on the safety blitz. And I illustrated what you said a moment ago, how far along Bruce Smith has come. This year, perhaps, playing... You said at the top of the show, Dan, if it, it's conceivable, better than ever. I mean, he is playing the defense rather than just freelancing on his own as, that he did so well over the years. Coming back from that terrible knee injury a couple of years ago, the U.S. ski team, Dr. Richard Stedman, put the leg back together again. Bruce Smith had so much faith in him, and he is 100% again. Third and four, early third quarter. Bills jump. 
Well, they're taking turns. That time, Lodish came across and made contact. That's the uh, that's the second time now for Lodish on this drive. They whistled him before. Pettibone says, "I like it." Encroachment number 73 defense. Five yards would be a first down. Well, that's just twice here in the last three plays. The Bills now have given the Redskins 10 yards. And that's uh, that's making it far too easy. I don't know what Mark Rippon is doing uh, any differently. I'm sure nothing at all other than just barking it out. But every quarterback in this league barks it out. It's the fourth first down on a penalty tonight for the Redskins. Uh, that's a backbreaker. Rippon, a three-step drive. Intercepted by Odom. He's trying to get it to Desmond Howard at Nate Odom's with the interception. We have watched Nate Odom's all night play that slant. Nobody plays a slant better than Odom's in the league. He, that time he anticipated it beautifully, stepped in front of the intended receiver, Desmond Howard, and gets the turnover. Good read by Odom. Continues for one Desmond Howard. Safe uh, to say that offensive coordinator Rod Dahauer is on the other end of that telephone talking to Howard about what he could have done maybe to help avert that, but give that credit to Nate Odoms. That was a fine play. Odoms fourth interception of the year. Sterling Palmer makes the tackle here. The uh, Cowboys were knocked off this year by Buffalo in Irving, and then the Giants lost here. And now if the, uh, the Bills can win tonight, they will have taken care of the three teams that have knocked them off in the three Super Bowls. That's a big difference between the regular season and the Super Bowl is Herman Thomas. Gets it up to the 31-yard line, tackled there by Andre Common. And we're watching the only two teams that have beaten the Cowboys here in 1993 in weeks one and then week two. Redskins first, Bills second, pre-Emmett Smith. Since then, they have uh, rolled off five in a row. Not a bad day by Emmett yesterday, huh? No. <laughs> 230 plus yards. Third down and four from the 32 yard line. And the forward progress should net the first down for the rookie Russell Copeland. Well, let's see where they're going to spot this thing now. And they will spot it. The Cowboys uh, at this point in time looking very much like the defending world champion. I would think that uh, to uh, think that somebody else would have a better chance would be uh, a little crazy at this point. The Giants coming up for them this week. There's Thomas really almost broke it but the tackle was made by Jason Buck, who uh, limited what might have been about a 15-yard pickup to a five-yard game. Good blocking over the left side for the Bills. John Fina, big hole for Thurman Thomas. Take a look at from the end zone, and you really see it. So seldom the first man is ever going to bring Thurman Thomas down. Second and five at the 44. That much time left in the third quarter. Thomas again. Close to midfield. Should be a first down. Nine minutes, ten seconds to go. Third quarter. Buffalo up by four. First down. Eilers makes the tackle. This is when it gets really exhausting for the defense. This hurry up offense. There really isn't a hurry up offense. It's a no huddle offense. They get up to the line of scrimmage. They know when they're going to snap the ball. The defense doesn't. Consequently, it's tough to get substitutions in and out. They stay on the field. They've got to be ready at, for any snap of the ball at any second. Kelly throws, and he finds the wide open Billy Brooks to the 29-yard line. Brooks has scored a touchdown for the Bills in the first half. is tackled by Carter. And defensively, you just tried to put the pressure on Kelly. You've got to hustle back to the line of scrimmage. The Bills line up. They'll come right at you again. Let's take a look at Billy Brooks, the former Indianapolis star. Good little move right in front of Carter. Carter giving him way too much room. Well, you saw Carter slip a little bit when Brooks made his move to the inside. He went to plant. That right foot slipped out from under him. The field is, I think, in pretty good shape, but it is a little bit slick. Big hole 
Thurman Thomas. 13-yard gain. Takes it to the 17. Eilers makes the tackle again. One of these patented Buffalo rolls with the no-huddle offense. They get on a roll and watch this one. Well, look at that blocking up front. Good block by Glenn Parker, 74, filling in for Richer. One of the best centers in the game, Ken Hall. He's taking care of business in there, too. Well, if this is 72, it's going to be a slam. Andre Reed. <laughs> what it is his 20th carry. He gets a block from Gardner, and then takes it to the 11-yard line. He's gained 83 yards tonight on 20 carries, has Thurman Thomas. There's a good look at Kent Hall. What a good player this guy is. What you, whenever they've had little problems with their offense, it's usually because Kent Hall has not been in there. Second and five. Thomas again. Takes it to about the seven. He's a little short of the first. It's going to be third and a yard or less. Four yards. They are just hammering the ball at the Redskins between the offensive tackles. Thurman Thomas, that I think most people think of his open field moves when you first think of him, but this guy is really at home inside. Third and one. Whoa. Farwell Gardner to the two. First down. If you like offensive line play, folks, you're getting a good illustration here of exactly how it ought to be done by the Buffalo Bills. Oh, and they are huge, too. They are blowing the 330 Davis 310 Parker's in there 305 Hall about 290 Gardner gets about half of what he needs to the one second and goal less than six minutes remaining in the third quarter once again this is so exhausting for the defense they can't rotate people in and out when Buffalo does not go into the huddle 74 yards thus far. Began at the 25-yard line. Second down and goal. Thomas. Touchdown. There's a statement. And there's the explanation for it. Boy, and Kelly raised his fist up to the sky. That was a Buffalo Bills drive from the 25-yard line. A classic no-huddle offense drive. Just beating up on Washington in the middle. Davis is 65. Ballard is 75. Look at that hole right there. And then Brad Edwards is way too high when he meets Thurman Thomas. And it's a mismatch. And that is the type of a statement that an offensive team sends to the defense that we just physically dominated you on this drive. There's a uh, that's, that's a drive that hurts psychologically as much as the point hurts you. Christie bangs it through. Thurman scores his second touchdown of the season, and the Bills now lead the Redskins 21 to 10. Very impressive drive, leading by 11. Christie to kick off, short kick. And fielded at the 12-yard line. Howard had to extend for it and couldn't get up ahead of steam and gets knocked down at the 19-yard line. And a little celebration by Monty Brown. <laughs> hey, All right, Monty, we get, we get the point. Hey, Monty, uh, one tackle, uh, it's not that big a deal. <laughs> not that. Go to a few Pro Bowls first, will you? Thurman Thomas. Yeah, I love, Thomas talks himself into, as you look at the numbers with the Bills scoring drive, He's very good at convincing himself that he doesn't get respect, the team doesn't get respect. It's great. He does a, a, a self side job every week. Here's Brooks. Because to this point, there are very few players in the league that get more respect than Thurman Thomas. You got that right. Yeah, particularly from the other players. But he's a player's player. Let's be realistic. It's a motivating factor for Thurman Thomas. We all throw different fuel on our own fires to get us going. And Al, you ought to know that more than anybody. <laughs> We've seen a bonfire it, tonight. Hey, and it works for Thurman. It works for Thurman. So go right ahead, Thurman. Yep. Because the end result is sweet to see. 
You got it. <laughs> First and ten from the 30-yard line. Reggie Brooks. Gain of four up to the 34-yard line. Darrell Talley makes the hit. 420 remaining, third quarter. Very important drive for the Redskins at this point after what Buffalo did. Oh. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Is that an NYPD script? Well, uh, you should use caution. <laughs> you were discretion advised. Second and six from the 34. Reggie Brooks for a first down. It's nine. Up to the 43-yard line. There's Walt Corey, the defensive coordinator of the Buffalo Bills, and he's got to be pleased with what he's seen this year. One of the big things that the Bills have done, we touched earlier about their takeaways, having 24 coming into this game, but that's the second and third guy that gets in there. Takeaways are seldom made by the first guy that makes the tackle. It's the second or third guy that more often than not makes the hit that jars the ball loose or strips it loose. And that's one of the areas the Bills have really gotten better. Brooks. It's two. Kelso comes up to make the hit at the 45-yard line. Bruce Smith got there first. Just Bruce Smith spins like nobody in this league. And I think we're going to get a good look at here. Take a look at this. He feels pressure. And watch him spin back to the outside. Look at that. With the right hand, clears off a blocker. Folks, that's that's juicy stuff. That's, that that can't be done by 99% of the people that play this game. Almost defies physics, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. Second and eight. Rip in for Howard out of bounds. Oh, Smith just complaining bitterly to referee Larry Nemers that he was held on that play. He's <laughs> he is not happy. You get. You get special attention when you're a Bruce Smith, and sometimes players take liberties with your person. Watch, watch him go upfield on this time. All right, he's working against Schlereth, and Reggie Brooks kind of uh, <laughs> grabs him a little bit from behind and then says, I didn't do it. Big hit by Bennett, though, on, on Rippon. Third down, eight from the 45. Washington trailing by 11 late in the third quarter. And Monk, Mark Monk picks up the first down, breaks a tackle, gets some more out of bounds inside the 40. Art Monk, who has not caught two tonight, has caught passes in 155 consecutive games on his way to the Hall of Fame. Interesting. <laughs> Look at this. I mean, Brooks, Reggie Brooks and Thurman Thomas dead even. It's almost identical. <laughs> <laughs> almost. <laughs> oh, <that's laughs> You know, color. You don't color? Yeah. What do you think of that, huh? Expert analysis. Yeah. <laughs> Fine move by Art Mock. Good running after he caught the ball to get that first down. First and ten at the 38-yard line. He's there. Griffin going deep, and Kelso is out of bounds. Esmond Howard was the intended receiver. Odom's at the underneath, and Kelso playing center field. Coming over close to the interception. And they kind of lured Rippon into thinking that was single coverage and Rippon trying to get the ball deep. Kelso couldn't come down with it inbounds. 157 left third quarter. 21-10 Buffalo. Second and ten. Brooks. 35 yard line. It's going to set up a third and seven. Smith. At the bottom of the pile. Marker down. Holding. Redskins. Richie Pettibone finally getting the, an opportunity to be a head coach. Had never been a head coach on any level. And, uh, Holding, Holding, offense, offense number, 69. number 69, 10 yards, repeat second down. Mark Flareth 
I think that's the first holding call of the night, Dan. And when you have a defensive lineman like Bruce Smith, it's kind of unusual that you go this long in the game without one. He just attracts the holding calls. I always thought that with a defensive lineman, they ought to keep uh, charts on on how many holding calls mm -hmm. he draws because is that really that much different than a sack? Granted, with a sack, the down is counted, but when you're consistently counting off 10-yard marks against the offense by drawing a hold, it's a it's indicative of how good you are. Second and 20. Griffin has it batted, incomplete. Jeff Wright. That is three or four batted passes we've seen tonight. The Bills defense doing a good job of getting their arms up and knocking the ball down. Remember a couple of weeks ago against Houston, how many did we see? Four yep. or five that night against Warren Moon. <laughs> right going high in the air. He's tall for a nose tackle. He's close to 6'4". So it's third and 20 now for Washington at the 48 yard line. And Rippon has to take a timeout in a situation where the Redskins on third and 10 or more this year have not converted all season. Timeout, Washington. High above. Rich Stadium in Orchard Park, New York, providing the Scenics on the first night of November. Temperature at about the freezing mark, 32, but a very light wind, so it's not that bad. It's third down and 20 for Washington at the 48-yard line. This is Ernest Biner with a lot of room to roam, and Biner takes it all the way to the 28, and that might be a first down. Ernest Biner getting 20. That's just about where they have to go. See where they spot it. So what they should be first, and it is. Great check off on the part of Rippon. He's looking downfield. Muck on a crossing pattern. He was looking for Muck. Checks off to Biner, and then Biner just bowls ahead when he realizes he's close to that first down. Watch this. We got running. He got a big block downfield by Ron Middleton, and that helped a great deal. Middleton's block gave him easily another 10 yards. Big, big play down by 11. First time they converted on third and 10 or more all season on their 23rd attempt. Rippon turned it off. Brooks stays in the block, takes Bennett out of the play, gives Rippon time, slow fly oh, the end of oh, oh. Odoms with his second of the night, fifth of the year. You saw that interception the second it left Mark Rippon's hand. Going back across the field is dangerous enough. He threw it back across the field into the coverage. He he tried to find Ricky Sanders. He overthrew Sanders by five yards. <laughs> go, go figure. Advantage in the NFL, the first team, uh, team you think about normally Denver. Since 1988, Buffalo's 38 and six here. And 6-0 in postseason, that's 44 of their last 50 games. And it, 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 the weather tonight, even though it's cold, as we touched on earlier, a, a non-factor. Yep. And it's it's the way they play. And give a lot of credit to the 80,000 people here. Here's and here's some of this guy, too. Yeah. <laughs> Picks up talk, nine. Talk about the home field advantage. Uh, this is also the winningest team of the 90s, the Buffalo Bills. And they've... It's been incredible. They were 11 to 5 a year ago, 2 13 in three seasons. Uh, they went on the road, too. You know, people tend to denigrate them because, you know, they've become the butt of a lot of jokes now, losing three straight Super Bowls. But, you know, would you rather be second best in the league or 18? And, and we were at the one Super Bowl where they only lost it by about two feet. Sure. Two Here's, feet to the right. Gardner picks up the first down on what will be the final play of the third quarter. Yeah, Kelly had a good answer to that when I asked him about it last night. He said, look, I don't think about it anymore. The players around the league are well aware of what kind of football team we are. Buffalo leading after three. Back we come in the fourth quarter of Monday Night Football after this from our ABC stations. Kevin Costner starring in Dances with the Wolves this Sunday. 
I tell you, we, ABC. We have, we have it all. <laughs> yep. Television event of the year. So does Thurman Thomas. Thurman Thomas has it all as we strike the fourth quarter. Picks up a first down. To the Wolves is where the Buffalo offense is preparing to throw the Redskin defense. Remember the last time they had the ball, the way they just went down the field at will and yeah, between the tackles, Dan, that was outside. The result was even bigger. The tap dancing on it. Thurman Thomas picks up one to the 46-yard line. Thomas tonight, 25 carries. And that's 117 yards. Just, just another mm -hmm. night at the office. Well, they carried it 27 times. We could go against the Jets for 117 yards. He loves the work. There it is. 4.7 average per carry. The league average, by the way, which uh, almost every year is 4.0. This year is under 3.9. It's 3.88 coming into the weekend. Thomas. Oh, come on. Please. Please. <laughs> I look at Dan. Dan looks at me. You're right. You don't, you don't see this very often. No. Great job of his offensive tackle, John Fina. The rookie coming all the way across the formation from left tackle. But he's Second year guy, rather. He was a rookie last year. But watch should it. have been stopped right there. Yeah, but look at Fina stay alive. Thurman stays on his hip. Boy. Like Bruce Smith, not many can do it. Kelly, and this time he gets Rob Awar. Their second tight end. Danny Copeland makes the tackle. Thurman Thomas, that's his, it's his biggest day or night of the year in terms of yardage gained on the ground. It's the fourth time in seven games he's been in triple figures. And he's allowed the luxury of just coming out whenever he feels like he needs a blow. It's his call, his choice. They just tell him they want him to go 110% while he's in there. Whenever he feels like he needs to come out, he comes out. And they don't lose too much when Ken Davis comes in for him. I just keep thinking of it. Thurman Thomas and Barry Sanders. Both at Oklahoma <laughs> State. Thomas played ahead of Barry, right? I keep thinking of all the pounding he takes, and between his junior and senior year, he had knee surgery, arthro arthroscopic knee surgery. Never had any major physical problem, and has carried the ball, as I mentioned earlier, over 2,400 times as a professional and a collegian. What was the name of that coach who was at Oklahoma State? He should be in the Hall of Fame. Those guys. It was Pat Jones at that time, wasn't it? Pat Jones. Yeah. There was another guy at Oklahoma State. Oh, Jimmy, Jimmy Johnson. Jimmy Johnson, Jimmy Johnson was right. Kenneth Davis to the 26-yard line. Johnson at Oklahoma State before he went to the University of Miami. The, uh, you don't normally you think of the Big Eight and the schools that come to mind are Nebraska and Oklahoma and more recently Colorado. And uh, Oklahoma State certainly has staked their claim to providing the NFL with two of the most exciting guys to tote the leather in this league. Second and 12 at the 26 yard line. The pick skin, whatever you want to call it. Here is Kenneth Davis. Oh, and Jimmy Johnson, he was the head coach at Oklahoma yeah, State uh, from 79 through 83. And Jones came along. And that's when uh, and Sanders and Thomas were going to school. Might have benefited from. Uh, Jimmy Johnson's recruiting. No really know whether he might have been responsible for the recruitment. Third down and nine. Kelly underneath to Davis, and he gets necktied by Tim Johnson. Johnson's played a pretty good football game tonight. He's made some big plays. He's the kind of help that the Redskins desperately need on their defensive line. Charles Mann's been trying to play tonight, but Al, I don't think you've called him once. This is his first time back after knee surgery a little more than a month ago, and it's obvious to watch him that he's turning in a game effort, but he's he's playing on only one leg. Here's a 45-yard field goal attempt by Steve Christie. He's trying to make it a 14-point lead. Wright puts it down. 
Christie boots it through. And with 11.25 remaining in the fourth quarter, Buffalo extends its lead to 24 to 10. And trying to go to six and one, which would keep them tied with Miami, though Miami would have the advantage for the moment because Miami has defeated Buffalo. And that was Buffalo's only loss this season in their only meeting. They'll meet once more in Miami toward the end of the year. That was, that was here. Yeah. And Miami, Miami still has to play Dallas. And Buffalo, of course, uh, has already not only played Dallas, but defeated them. They may get another shot at it. Yes. <laughs> Christie's kick is taken by Brian Mitchell at the goal line. He almost gets tackled at the seven. And turns it into a nice run back out to the 28-yard line. That's where the skins will take over. Bobby Brown makes the tackle. 11-11 left in the fourth. Uh, in this half, have had both of their drives ended on interceptions by the Buffalo Bills and here they take over in a position where they've got to get something going they're down by two touchdowns they're at their own 27 yard line first and ten and Rippon gives it to Brooks Brooks goes through the middle to the 34 yard line Richie Pettibol was saying uh, last night the running game has been good he's very happy with his running backs and Reggie Brooks turning in a good job tonight Ron Middleton led the way with a block for 61 yards and a touchdown and it went over the Jets. But Darryl Talley with all the quickness. The speed on the outside, steps in front. And Buffalo gets the ball back. Dear Saturn team members, my name is Judith Ricewick. We kept Monday Night Madness versus Washington. And we'll take a look back at the era of Jimmy Griffin tomorrow at 10. Here's the update, by the way, on Joe Montana. Uh, he has a strained hamstring, again, uh, suffered yesterday, higher up than the original hamstring pull. He was on crutches today. He is questionable at best, in the words of the Chiefs, for next week. But Kansas City, it becomes a very important game for them now in a very wide-open AFC West as they take on Green Bay. Arrowhead Stadium is the site next Monday night. Green Bay now has won three in a row. Reggie White, all-time sack leader. They've got it in gear again, and Mark Griffin having a very troubled night. Troubled season. He's been playing, but the knee is still very sore. There is Kerry Compton. I don't know whether we'll see him or not. Kelly. And he just flips it away. Conklin becomes the number two quarterback right now because Rich Gannon's hurt. Conklin would have been three. Gannon would have been two, but Gannon's hurt. Yeah, Gannon's got a fractured foot. And Conklin's showing no signs that the coaches have said anything to him about coming in and replacing Rippon. So we can only assume that Rip will be back uh, with the Redskins' next possession. But you, 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 it's tough to really dump on Rippon. The guy is playing hurt. He was probably, he probably came back before he should have. Third and 11. And Kelly's pass is caught at the 36th. Kelly, for sure the first down. Andre, Andre Reed makes the catch. Good team right there between Kelly and Reed. Kelly chased out of the pocket. He was looking deep. Rolled to his right and now watch him motion. Reed bringing him on back. Reed gave him a good angle. <laughs> Kelly with a little acrobatic move there. Ball at the 36-yard line. It is 
fourth down and three. And what's happening here? Well, the play clock is ticking down. Now. Kelly's Buffalo. upset about it. If you're going to call me a play, get it in here where I can get it off. 59 to go in regulation. A two touchdown advantage for the Bills. This Michael Frank Gifford and Dane Deardorff. Monday night football. Bruce Smith, another big night. Big night for the Bills defensively. And right now, offensively, Buffalo lines up to go for it on fourth down and three at the 37 yard line. So instead of a short punt or a field goal attempt, they give it to Thomas. He's going to come up short. And Washington has held them on downs, and they'll take over at the 35. ABC's Monday Night Football is being brought to you by all the team members at Saturn, a different kind of company, a different kind of car. Transamerica, for life insurance and financial services, the power of the pyramid is working for you. Burger King and its everyday value menu where you can have it your way, you'll love that place. And GE, from aircraft engines to appliances, they bring good things to life. There's a decision by Marv Levy based on Mark Rippon's four interceptions. Two touchdown lead, nine minutes left to go in the ballgame. Like if the Redskins weren't playing so poorly, you don't make that decision. Rippon throws. Catch is made by Monk. Mark Levy, in his defense, you know, you, we throw so many numbers at you and you read and hear so much. 28, 28 takeaways for Buffalo. Figure it out, that's one per quarter seven games this is their 28th quarter that's a lot yes it is <laughs> this group is playing good Ricky Sanders up to the 46 yard line and that's a first down I think uh, Paul Corey has really introduced some uh, innovative defenses for the Buffalo Bills they played a lot of two down linemen tonight they use Cornelius Bennett number 97 he'll line up as a down lineman top of your screen there but Jeff Wright and Bruce Smith are the only down linemen in the ballgame at the moment, the six DBs. From the 46-yard line, Ricky Sanders to the 48-yard line. The reason they can do that, too, is because, frankly, because of Bruce Smith. I mean, he is a pass-rushing force all on his own. And they move him all around so effectively. Right now, the Bills' defense needs to get back into this game a little bit. They're kind of standing around waiting for the next guy to make a play. Brooks. Reggie's got a first down and Brooks breaking it inside the 30-yard line and out of bounds. Washington drives him out at the 25-yard line with 7.38 to go. 50 running by the rookie from Notre Dame. I think the Bills were over on the sidelines, maybe already uh, chalking this one up in the win column, and all of a sudden they don't get that first down. Their defense is back out on the field, and this is not the same level of intensity that they've been playing with all day. Credit the Redskins for a well-executed play. The crowd senses that there's a little bit of urgency here. From the 25-yard line, Griffin protected well and then throws incomplete intended for Ricky Sanders had gotten behind James Williams. The touch on the long pass, Frank, just doesn't seem to be there for the Redskins in their passing game. Well, I think he might have also got a little bit confused as to what that defense was. It was his own defense. And all of a sudden, he saw the cornerback dropping off. That was J.D. Williams, and he had to throw that deep. Really almost throwing it away. Second and 10, the Bills are leading by 11 or more points going into the fourth. 54 and 0 in this ballpark. Flags everywhere. All over the place. Ball start prior to the snap. Number 64, offense, five yards, still second down. Big Mo. All the way to the left of your screen, there's Mo. Just coming back out early. Yeah. Credit Bruce Smith again, yeah. wouldn't you, Dan? Oh, yeah. I'm telling you, the guy draws more penalties. I venture to guess than any other defensive lineman in the league. Here's a draw to Biner on second and 15, and Ernest takes it to the 22-yard line. It'll be third down and seven coming up. Of course, next week we get a treat. If two guys have been competing over the years for that role of most dominating defensive lineman in the game, it would be Bruce Smith and Reggie White. 
We get to see Reggie next week in Kansas City. And of course, the new guy on the scene is Cortez Kennedy with the Seattle Seahawks. Third and seven and oh. goes through the hands of Art Monk. And it'll be fourth down. Mm. Monk comes back toward the huddle, uh, wide-eyed. Monk was uh, wide open on the play. Just standing there. Well, fourth down now. Wasn't that point of thrown either. I don't quite understand the confusion for Art Monk. They're looking a for little it. high, but I mean, certainly catch a ball. That's not a difficult ball even to handle. It's fourth and seven. Redskins have to go for it. Down by two touchdowns. They have to get to the 15 to convert. And it's knocked down again at the line of scrimmage. Once more, Jeff Wright got a hand up. And that's that for the Washington Drive. Jeff Wright is a force in the middle. We talked about his height earlier for a nose tackle. He makes the contact, stands right up in front of the passer. He's six foot three, six foot four. Watch him go up. And he's done this over and over. Just pushes the pile back, times it out with the quarterback, and gets another block. 6.39 remaining, so Rippin on a drive that started very promisingly ends with them losing it on down. Bills have it now at the 22-yard line, and they'll take as much time off the clock as they can up by 14. But before they can do that, a flag. We had a false start on the Bills. One of their guys jumped out early. False start prior to the snap. Number 70, offense, five yards, still first down. John Pena. Mark Rippin. For the night, four interceptions. And well below 50% on the completion percentage. Mm, 41. Not a good. <laughs> Kenneth Davis now, wrapped up at the 22-yard line. That's the type of percentage that seldom wins you anything. <laughs> 41, 43. Mm. Well, Kenneth the Redskins Davis go home, there. and uh, they play Indianapolis at RFK next week. The <laughs> Buffalo Bills are at New England next week. Marv Levy. Marvelous, Marv. Can't wait to uh, hop in his car and listen to a talk show on the way home. Uh, he had some great comments this past week about uh, all, the, all the shows, the deal with sports. Kenneth Davis. Thanks, uh, Ryan First. He said, you know, he said, I'm stunned. He said, I don't think it's healthy that people spend so much time thinking about listening to sports. People have nothing, nothing, nothing but sports on their minds, have flabby minds. He was basically talking about people who, I guess, listen to sports talk radio and are consumed by sports hour after hour. He said, read books, pick up a book. Bless you, Marv. Wonder, Bless I you. wonder how he knows what they're saying, though. I think he might just I mean, tune in a little bit generically. <laughs> Third down and seven at the 25-yard line. Little dump off to Davis. He probably listened once too much to Tom from Tonawanda calling up and saying, can we trade the third-string nose tackle for Aikman and Emmett Smith? I wouldn't Tom trade. from Tonawanda? Well, whatever. I, I wouldn't would. trade the nose tackle they have. <laughs> not, the, uh, not the effort that <laughs> Jeff Wright turned in tonight. Right. I'd keep this guy. Sweeping in Buffalo. Chris Moore. Worth that, and Chris Moore comes in to punt, his second punt of the night. Four and a half minutes to go. 24 to 10. Bills on top. It's a decent Buffalo bounce. And he's down at the 25-yard line. Skins will take over again at that spot. 46-yard punt. Yeah, old Marv Levy. Uh, well, we call him old Marv with, with affection. He is the oldest uh, head coach in the league. But he loves coaching. 
I asked him uh, tonight, I said, is there anything else you want to do with your life right now? He says, nope. So this is this is what I love to do. I've got a great owner in Ralph Wilson. Work very well with the general manager, John Butler, who succeeded a great friend of Marv's and Bill Polian. Good situation, and he just wants to keep on doing it. He says, as long as I stay healthy. Bill Polian working out of the league office, and a lot of people speculating that he'll become the general manager of one of the new franchises. That is dropped by Art Monk at the 50. I'd be surprised if he didn't. And by the way, congratulations to Charlotte, our newest, uh, mm -hmm. our newest entry into the National Football League, the Carolinas, and yep. maybe uh, sometime Charlotte in the Panthers. foreseeable future we'll be Charm. doing a Monday nighter in the Carolinas. Yeah, you're right. I it's, hope they can draft better than that. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Bill. <laughs> Begin to check out the hotels in Charlotte pretty soon. Hope they draft better than that. <laughs> Little or no expense, we got you a model right from the sidelines. Yeah. <laughs> it was kind of a poor specimen, wasn't it? <laughs> you just sucked it up a little bit, you know. It made a big difference. The place kicker. It's a good-looking logo. I like the uh, I like the logo. Hey, we also said congratulations to Don Shula. Yeah. A remarkable feat. Tying George Alice. First of all, just staying around that long is remarkable. Third down and ten. Look out, Bruce. He got a hand on him, and it's incomplete. And Mark Rippon. Somebody for the Redskins is still Bostic. Down. Jeff Bostic gets a full. Look at Bruce go around the corner, gets that left hand onto Rippon's back. Great speed. I don't think Alan Avey thought he had any chance no. of getting a hand on the no. quarterback. Normally, guys who get upfield that quickly can't stop and keep their bodies under control and round the corner. Normally, they they just keep going upfield like a runaway train, and they're out of the play. Reggie Roby's pick was not a thing of beauty, but it's going to look real nice on the stat sheet. He does deny physics, doesn't he? The way he spins with about 275 pounds. That was a 51-yard boot by Reggie Roby. And most sacks since 1982. And that's the year they began uh, officially counting sacks and, and all of the rest. So, you, you know, we've talked about this in the past. You don't go back to the Deacon Joneses of the world and the rest, but since... And that really, in essence, the number, it, cheapens, it cheapens the whole thing. You're only talking about the last 11 years of the NFL. Well, and... It's it, it's good to chart because it tells us what's what's happened since 82. But boy, we there's some great ones that aren't included in that. From the 17-yard line, it's first and 10. And Brooks gets tackled immediately by Darrell Green as he reaches the 22-yard line. I know the one that pops right into your head is Deacon Jones. Well, how many times do you have to block him? Because he left an impression. Uh, he, well, he just, when I was uh, coming up in the game, Deacon had the greatest move. It's no longer legal, but the head slap, where you were able to come up field and hit an offensive lineman right, right in the ear hole with your hand. And Deacon Jones would hit you with that thing, and, and your eyes would roll up in your head. You would see stars. Uh, it was, I'm glad they outlawed it because it was a, a lethal blow. You know, I think of others too. Uh, Gino Marchetti, uh, he's not been documented. Oh, Andy Robustelli, Carl Eller, uh, uh, Claude Humphrey, uh, Too Tall John. I hate to go back with some of the guys. Uh, Lynn Ford, sure. How about uh, how about the big man, uh, Doug Atkins? There's a. Mm. He just didn't want to beat you to the quarterback. He wanted to hurt you on the way there. He took you with him. Washington just took a timeout as they conserve as much of the clock as they can in hopes of getting the ball back. 337 left in the fourth. Kenneth Davis gets ridden down at the 21 yard line, and Washington's going to spend another timeout conserving that clock, trying to force a punt to get the ball back. Guy like Merlin Olson, how many sacks yeah. do you think he racked up over 15 or 16 years? Well, going to get interior lineman, Alan Page. Yeah. There is Biscuit. Cornelius Bennett, he's, he hobbled a little. He's 
time. He's on, I doubt he's on his way in because he's cold. I assume that hmm, looks like he's carrying that left arm a little gingerly. Redskins have used their final timeout. Jeff Bostic, who came into this game hurt, he's got a handful of Super Bowl rings. The end of a, at the tail end of a marvelous career. When he, when he came into this game from Clemson, I don't think anybody thought it was conceivable that he'd be around for 14 years. A real overachiever. Free agent, wasn't he, Dan? Oh, he, he was special. All the way back in 1980, Frank. Undersized, only 6'2", has to work hard to stay up there around 265. That's, uh, when people like that achieve success, you're really happy for them. Boy, and he's hurt tonight, too. He was slow leaving the field a while ago. He's going to have to take it back out there because there's nobody else. No. Now, when they lost Ed Simmons, back in the first quarter, Bostic was forced to come in. Pretty courageous effort by... A Redskins offensive line that really moved the ball pretty well in the first half. Yeah, you got to congratulate him. Chris Moore's kick. 40 yards. Ryan Mitchell. Back to the 47 yard line. So the Skins have it. 232 left. They don't have a timeout. The only time the clock stops is at the two minute warning. Uh, can you guys recall in recent memory seeing a football team? as far down as the Redskins are right now in such a short period of time from where they were just a couple of years ago. We all know the reasons, but this is a team that's now going to be one and six. And, and they facing were a very long 14 year. 14 and two. Yep. And Rippin somehow gets it away, but it is incomplete. Brooks couldn't hold on. And, well, uh, I think it begs to be said here, although we'll never know, but this is just my personal opinion. This team would probably be one and six if Joe Gibbs was still coaching. Well, I think with all of the injuries they've had, and granted, last year they had a lot of them, but they seem to recover, but they're getting older. This is a, this is a pretty old team right now. This is a team also that's going to be very much in transition with the salary cap coming in because they are one of the uh, two or three most highly paid teams in the league right yep. now. And this is going to be a pretty interesting offseason for the Redskins. Well, I think the salary cap has already impacted. Gary Clark, the their number one offensive up. player of a year ago, is out with the Cardinals. Uh, Wilbur Marshall, a lot could be said that he might have been their best defensive player a year ago. A He's in Houston. A lot of change. Jim Lachey goes down. Well, the second injury. game with an injury, their best offensive lineman. If we listed all the injuries of the Redskins, it, it would take three pages of graphics yep. to get by. 48-yard line, first down. And Rippin loses the ball. Go, Rippin go, go. And in big Mo. Mo Alawanibi. Oh, don't get that leg out of there. They rested it away Rippin. from him, but uh, after it was dead. So to speak. At the 41 yard line. Well, that'll go down as a forced fumble, but not a recovered fumble. And we have come upon the two minute warning. In fact, we come after this message from the National Football League. Night football, as always, so brilliantly produced by the Wolfman Ken Wolf and directed by Craig Jenner. Joey Schiavo, our TD. Ben Harvey, our associate director. Emily Deutsch, producing halftime. Bob Simon, our uh, production manager. Dennis Zabo, Jim Licata, and Zagang. Fred King and Margaret Schaefer. Good to have uh, our man Steve Hurd back from the Baseball Wars. Our spotter is uh, Malibu Kelly Hayes. George Hill, our statistician. Kirsten Anderson, keeping control of things up in the booth, so to speak. And Mark Amento and Brian Mobleson on the computer stats. The gang's all here and the gang moves to Kansas City next Monday where the Chiefs do battle against the Green Bay Packers. First time that the Green Bay has been on Monday Night Football since 1986. Looking forward to that. Yeah. 
41 yard line. Rip in. Oh. Middleton. Oh, don't get hurt, Ron. With his pass intended for Ron Middleton is incomplete. Ron, uh, I don't know what he was looking for, but it certainly wasn't the football. <laughs> Almost stuck in his helmet. Well, he was certainly open. Right off his face mask. And he seems to be looking right at it. I think he was looking back into the pocket and ripping. He perhaps had forgotten there was a slight roll on that. Never saw the ball coming. Here comes uh, Smith. Passes low. Incomplete. And this is Ernest Biner. Pressure by Bruce Smith. Hey, Bruce. I'll tell you. Bruce Smith is in unbelievable condition. He wants that hundredth sack. <laughs> He's got less than two minutes in the game. He is still coming all out. Just blows around Mo Elowen Eby once again. He wants the sack. <laughs> Says, I had him. Sorry, Bruce. The in the grass rule is no longer in vogue. Third and ten. Look out. Oh, he's got it. That's a real one. Will that be a sack? Oh, yeah. Uh, tell you oh, what. did he get behind the line? He slid. Let's see where they spot the ball. Yeah. Oh, if they're going to leave it right there. No, kind of loss. No, Bruce. Yeah. He Bruce, didn't get it. So he, close. He made a great <laughs> recovery. So close. At the 40 yard line. <laughs> he so almost just got, going to intercept. He almost got his second career interception. He got one a week ago. Well, the one he got in the Jet game was phenomenal. They are actually going to say the official scorer of sorts here in Buffalo saying that since there was no gain on the play, they're going to give him a sack? Is that true? Well, okay. he deserves a sack. They, they have given him a sack on that play. So uh, I hear Reggie White. Oh, no way. Yeah, yeah. Well, Meanwhile, it's, it's a shame in the sense that it comes so late in the game with most of the crowd having gone home and he hits a milestone. Well, congratulations, Bruce. Yes, sir. Number 100. It has been so noted. I'm sure Mark Griffin's real happy for you. Let's watch it again. Uh, well, he was Bruce's really taking a right breather on this, Dan. He came hard on the play before. He's just kind of taking it easy here. Griffin chased out of the pocket. Here he comes back. And when you look at where Rippon hit the ground, that really is a sack. Yep. Because where Rippon and the ball came down looked to be a good yard behind the line of scrimmage. So I wonder if he knows it yet. Deserve it. Deserve uh, it. So. Because there's yeah. been nothing up on the board here no, to no. indicate that. A couple of kneel downs are going to do it. This, by the way, is the first time the Redskins have lost six games in a row in one season since 1963. 30 years. They lost six straight. Just prior to the weekend that Kennedy was assassinated, Bill McPeak was the coach, and it's been three decades since they've incurred six straight losses in the course of one year. And, and I would say the Buffalo Bills have got it back together pretty and good. Marv Levy now joins Bum Phillips as the only two coaches to have defeated all of the current 28 teams in the National Football League. And it's in regular season play. Has the makings for a long year on the banks of the Potomac. Ooh. Meanwhile, a pretty happy year thus far on the banks of Lake Erie as they win it through the Bills 24-10. Until next week in Kansas City, Al Michaels, Frank Gifford, Dan Deirdre. Good night from Orchard Park, New York.